It is nine o'clock on the East Coast. I'm meteorologist Melissa Nord as we track Hurricane Milton here from Atlanta with 11 Alive, your weather impact team here. This is a storm that is going to be historical. It underwent one of the most intense rapid intensification cycles on record in the Atlantic Basin. And as it gets closer to landfall, the size of the storm is going to be growing and getting a lot bigger. So we're talking about really big impacts along the west coast of Florida, well inland as well. And now also parts of southeastern Georgia are in a tropical storm watch as well. So what you really need to know is those who are on the west coast of Florida in mandatory evacuation zones, this is the last day to do any of those preps to get out because tomorrow morning we'll start to see some of the outermost bands of Milton moving in. And then from there, the winds will pick up tomorrow afternoon. The storm surge will start coming in and it will peak as it's making landfall Wednesday night. Now the satellite imagery this morning doesn't look as impressive as what it did yesterday. And the reason why is the storms undergone something called uh, it's undergoing something called an eye wall replacement cycle. Hurricanes don't maintain the same structure the whole time they're going through the ocean. They change, they morph, they're they're modifying and adapting to their environment. And one of the things these hurricanes do is they kind of replace their eye wells. In that process, they might look a little more ragged on satellite imagery, but afterwards we can see a larger hurricane in the aftermath of that and one where after it finishes that the winds can go up again. So the eight o'clock advisory winds are down a little bit again. They were 155 at five o'clock this morning. Now they're 145. However, we are expecting Milton to again become a category five hurricane later today. Right now, the storm is a little bit bigger than it was yesterday, but not by much. It's still a relatively compact system. The hurricane force winds extend 30 miles outside the center and the tropical storm force winds extend about 105 miles outside the center. The pressure's also been increasing as well within this process. Yesterday, that pressure got all the way below 900 millibars, making it one of the strongest on record as well based on the pressure levels. All right, what's new at eight o'clock? Well, we've seen some changes to the tropical alert. So now you notice in this red color as I zoom in, we have hurricane warnings going from the west coast to the east coast of Florida. So that's new before we had hurricane watches on the east coast of Florida and now all the way from Jacksonville Beach down through the space coast to the kind of the northern part of the Treasure Coast, we have hurricane warnings in effect. To the south of that, we have tropical storm warnings in blue, tropical storm warnings up along the Big Bend as well, where they took the brunt of Helene taking landfall. And then up into eastern Georgia along the coast in South Carolina, we also have tropical storm watches, which remain in effect. So we'll see later today if they decide to upgrade that into a warning. My guess is the wind field with this storm will be big enough to where they probably will upgrade that to a tropical storm warning later on today. Big picture, this may become a five again. As it gets closer to landfall, the category may change and go down a little bit. That's because a little wind shear is expected to impact Milton. However, as I mentioned, the size of this storm will be growing significantly. So that will put even bigger picture impacts to the storm surge and the wind damage impacts along Florida's peninsula. So landfall has shifted a little bit later since yesterday. So the timing that shifted later and it hasn't really changed much in terms of what we're expecting this to look like at, at landfall. But that landfall, as we get you know, closer to landfall, the cone of uncertainty is smaller and smaller. So it's still showing a landfall anywhere from Crystal River all the way down to Fort Myers. However, many of our models are closing in on that landfall being closer to the Tampa, Sarasota kind of metro area. So that will be where landfall ends up happening. However, the storm is going to be very big. So even if you're outside of the cone of uncertainty, you're going to get big impacts from the system, or at least impacts, depending on where you are. As it makes its way out along the east coast of Florida, still a hurricane, and then gradually we'll encounter more wind shear and then weekend from there. But this will be a big system. Live look right now, this is Clearwater Beach. You know, you see two people, it looks like, walking along the beach. They're under a mandatory evacuation there, as well as many parts in Pinellas County, all evacuation zones A and B there for many counties around the Tampa Bay area. And a lot of them have been asked, okay, if you're not going inland towards Orlando and you're gonna head up into Georgia, don't go to South Georgia into Valdosta. I know that's a lot closer, but Valdosta got hit really bad by Helene just a week and a half ago. 
So they're asking them to travel into Macon or up into Atlanta. It's a live look at the campgrounds at Atlanta Motor Speedway in Henry County in Hampton, Georgia, and you can see they've got it open and they're going to offer free camping for people who are going to be camping there. Also, the Peach Pass lanes south of Atlanta, the I-75 Peach Pass lanes, those are going to be directed pointed north. So they're not going to change directions later on this afternoon again for the PM rush. They're going to be just directed north so that all those people coming in from Florida we have extra lanes for them to get northward into the Atlanta area if that's their final destination to ride out the storm. Well, let's talk about the storm surge because I think this is going to be one of the prolific parts of this hurricane for the Tampa Bay area. Okay, Why we get storm surge? It has to do with the pressure drop, the size of the storms, and also the direction of the winds and the curvature of what's happening with these little inlets. Okay. And with this particular storm as it's coming in, landfall, and again, somewhere near the metro area of Tampa Bay. We don't know exactly, Tampa, we don't know exactly where it's going to be. But you see these winds going counterclockwise around the storm. It's going to be just south of landfall that sees the onshore winds for the longest. So this is where you're going to have the storm surge getting its greatest impact, the highest levels. The northern side, we see more of an offshore wind around that. So yes, we still get storm surge. It's just not as catastrophic as what is going to be just south of landfall. Then as this is pushing off the coast, again, storm surge on the east side of Florida and Georgia as well. So we are expecting some storm surge in Georgia because of the counterclockwise flow around uh, Milton. That storm surge though in Georgia is not going to be what it will be on the west coast of Florida. Let me show you the latest numbers from the Hurricane Center. This is the peak storm surge. So if we had a high tide at the worst time of the storm coming in, this is what it could do. And they're forecasting in the Tampa Bay area. So that includes Clearwater Beach, where I was showing you that camera, down through Tampa Bay, Hillsborough Bay, Old Tampa Bay, and then from Anna Maria Island down through Sarasota to just north of Port Charlotte, 10 to 15 feet storm surge. 10 to 15 feet, I'll say that again. That's a wall 10 to 15 feet high of water coming in with this storm. And water is the deadliest part of landfalling tropical systems. Okay, between the storm surge and then land flooding, unfortunately, like we saw with Helene just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but with these kind of storm surge projections, a one story building, not going to cut it. Two story building, not going to cut it. Okay, think about how tall are your ceilings in your house? A lot of houses have about nine foot ceilings. So if you have 10 to 15 foot storm surge, that water is coming in the second story of that. I want to back up and I'm actually show you also what's going to happen in Georgia. Okay, because we're a Georgia station. You notice east coast of Florida all the way up through Georgia. These are projections up to six feet. I think it's more like two to four feet, two to four feet likely along the coast of Georgia. Again, a lot of this is marsh areas, but then we have some barrier islands like Tybee Island, Jekyll Island that will be inundated by some storm surge there and then lower amounts up near Charleston. So again, that's one aspect of the storm that we're watching. The other aspect is the wind field and that wind field is growing. It's expanding. It's getting bigger and I'll show you the wind field timing of this. In yellow, these are tropical storm force winds. Orange, those are the higher caliber tropical storm force winds. And then in red, those are the hurricane force winds. And you see here, tomorrow afternoon, we start to see tropical storm force winds pushing in. Then tomorrow evening, those winds intensify. That's as we see the center of Milton just offshore. And then landfall is going to happen. It's been pushed back a little bit. So sometime between maybe 11 or midnight and say 3 in the morning. That looks about when landfall will happen. As that landfall happens, we'll see a huge chunk of highly populated real estate getting hurricane force winds. So that will not just push that wall of water up south of landfall, but it's also going to amount to a lot of power outages as it's making, uh, making landfall. One other thing I want to point out is look at how big this yellow circle on the map is. This is our, our wind field graphic, which shows you how wide, how large that tropical storm force wind field will be. It's going to expand. Okay, right now they're extending about 105 miles outside the center of the storm. By landfall, it'll be about 350 miles across from north to south. That's a really big storm. So the entire Florida Peninsula will see tropical storm force winds and then in the bullseye where landfall is and cutting across through Orlando, you see they see the hurricane force winds. Also to note, Thursday afternoon, 
some tropical storm force wind gusts possible along Georgia's coast as well. Now, up in North Georgia, I don't expect any direct impacts from this storm. Okay, we have a stalled front. That stalled front is going to help to steer Milton across the Florida Peninsula out into the Atlantic. But South Georgia will have some rainfall, especially down in southeastern Georgia. Okay, you can see some rain amounts that might be one to three inches. But in this bullseye, where there's a lot more rain, a significant inland flash flooding threat as well on top of the storm surge threat. So people were asked to evacuate because of the storm surge threat. Well, on top of that, we're adding all this rain in, so flash flooding will be likely. That water is not going to be able to recede out the waterways because the water is being pushed in with the storm surge. So they have all these little, you know, inlets as you get closer to the coast, these little rivers, these little inlets. That's a way for water to flow back out into the Gulf of Mexico. <clears throat> it's not going to do that because the water is going to be pushed in with the storm surge. So that's why there's a really big flooding threat as well as the storm is making landfall. Let's show you forecast track hour by hour. I've started tomorrow morning so you can see by tomorrow morning, we start to see some of the outermost bands moving in. We'll see the tornado threat starting to push in as well. We get these little squalls, but landfall has slowed down a little bit. So into Wednesday evening, they are starting to see an increasing winds. The rain's increasing, but that eye wall has not moved on shore yet. That eye wall will likely not move on shore until after about eight o'clock tomorrow evening. Landfall just after midnight. Again, this is our in-house model. This is not the official track from the Hurricane Center. So this landfall could be up here. It could be here, it could be here, maybe even there. Okay, but it looks like it's somewhere between Tampa, Bradenton, Sarasota, somewhere in there, rather than all the way up here by Crystal River. So that will be landfall. It's pushing across and quickly moving out over the, the Atlantic. You see some of that rain wrapping around, so that's the onshore winds, the rain impacting southeastern Georgia. And then as we get past Thursday lunchtime, it'll push out to sea. Notice I've zoomed out so you can see here in Atlanta, we're going to be dry. Now some of our models bring in a few high level clouds late tomorrow, okay? I don't expect any increase in winds, anything like that. It'll be a northeasterly wind, the flow around the system. So again, just to recap, Milton, the 8 o'clock advisory. Next one's going to come in at 11 o'clock unless hurricane hunters fly into this storm this morning and find, okay, this thing is starting to strengthen again. Then we'll get updates on that. But winds right now 145 miles per hour moving east northeast. This is the Yucatan Peninsula. They're under hurricane warnings there. Luckily, this eye wall isn't going to directly move on the coast. We feel like it's just far enough north to where they'll avoid the worst of Milton. But as this then moves into the open Gulf of Mexico away from the Yucatan Peninsula, it's going to turn into a much larger storm and that will mean bigger picture impact. So that's kind of a recap of what's happening with Milton. I'll put the satellite image back on. Locally here in Georgia, we uh, North Georgia, we're expecting that cooler, drier air to last for the rest of the week. So I'm not expecting any impacts for Milton. But just again to recap, here's what we know as of nine o'clock this morning. We know Milton is a strong, dangerous category four storm. Those winds are 145 miles per hour, higher gusts. Those hurricane force winds extend 30 miles outside the center. The tropical storm force winds are extending right now 105 miles outside the center of the storm. National Hurricane Center has now extended hurricane and storm surge warnings to the east coast of Florida and residents in Florida are urged if you're under an evacuation warning, okay, a evacuation order, please evacuate. They're also urged to use today to get those final preps done, okay? This could be the worst storm to hit the Tampa area in over 100 years. So some storms that give a glancing blow, we get the storm surge, we get some winds, okay, and then powers back on a day later. The power could be out in some areas. You gotta prepare for not just one or two days, you gotta prepare for five, six, seven days without power, running water, food as well. So all those preparations need to be completed today in advance of the storm. Okay, some tips, some good tips. As you're, as you're thinking about preparing for the storm, of course you want all your water, but one of the good tips I'd recommend is putting some of those water bottles in the freezer. Then when your power goes out, you stick the water bottles in the fridge. That helps to keep your produce cold for longer. Okay, propane tanks. Everybody knows to fill them up. Yes. Okay. But remember, if you're running a generator 
and you're using gas on your generator after the storm, do not have that near your house. Make sure it's well ventilated. We see so, so many unfortunate fatalities after landfalling systems because people run their generators improperly and they get carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, and then topping off the gas tank. Now, folks who are in the storm surge warnings, if you have an electric vehicle, do not have that parked in your garage or left there. Salt water can cause fires of electric uh, cars as well. It can, it can fry the battery and cause uh, fires. We saw that after Helene, unfortunately. So again, just to recap, this is the eight o'clock advisory. The next one will come in from the National Hurricane Center at nine o'clock, or rather at 11 o'clock this morning. And we will be live on 11 Alive News at that point at 11. So you can join us there or on 11alive.com or 11 Alive, um, our app on TV. And we'll have that advisory for you because I know a lot of stations don't go back on the air until noon. So we'll see you then.